This is Twit. Okay, so Leo, uh, this is a little uncomfortable, but it's important. Um, swatting goes IOT. So as I'm sure everyone knows, the practice of swatting, you know, SWAT as in special weapons and tactics, involves pranksters, you know, malicious pranksters, <clears throat> calling police to report a non-existent emergency, which, if it were real, would necessitate a, like, a forced entry, weapons drawn, heightened alert response from local law enforcement. Of course, local law enforcement has no way of knowing whether any given call for help is real or a dangerous and expensive prank. So they might well be required to assume it's real, uh, and that has certainly been the case in the past. You know, swatting attacks are like a real thing. Now, the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation, our FBI, is bringing awareness to an emerging trend where swatting victims' smart home security systems, and not just one or two, are being used to first launch and then observe swatting events. Last week, the FBI posted a public service announcement titled, Recent Swatting Attacks Targeting Residents with Camera and Voice-Capable Smart Devices. I have a link to the public service announcement uh, in, in the show notes. The FBI wrote, the Federal Bureau of Investigation is issuing this announcement to warn users of smart home devices with cameras and voice capabilities to use complex, unique passwords and enable two-factor authentication to help protect against swatting attacks, their own word in their announcement. They said smart home device manufacturers Recently, so smart home device manufacturers recently notified law enforcement that offenders have been using stolen email passwords to access smart devices with cameras and voice capabilities and carry out swatting attacks. Then they tell us what swatting is, and they and they say offenders often use spoofing technology to anonymize their own phone numbers to make it appear to first responders as if the emergency call is coming from the victim's phone number. This enhances their credibility when communicating with dispatchers. So they said, how is this version of swatting carried out? Recently, offenders have been using victims' smart devices, including video and audio-capable home surveillance devices, to carry out swatting attacks. To gain access to the smart devices, offenders are likely taking advantage of customers who reuse their email passwords for their smart device. The offenders use stolen email passwords to log into the smart device and hijack features, including the live stream camera and the device's speakers. They then call emergency services to report a crime at the victim's residence. As law enforcement responds to the residence, the offender watches the live stream footage and engages with the responding police through the camera and speakers. In some cases, the offender also live streams the incident on shared community online platforms. The FBI is working with private sector partners who manufacture smart devices to advise customers about the scheme and how to avoid being victimized. The FBI is also working to alert law enforcement first responders to this threat so they may respond accordingly. And so they end this announcement explaining, you know, to use a strong email passwords, uh, practice strong cyber hygiene, uh, complex passwords, uh, 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 that you've not used elsewhere, don't reuse the password that you use for your email, uh, use multi-factor authentication, and so forth. So, you know, bottom line, be really diligent about all of the good security practices we all know that we should be employing. Uh, and so what we have here is another new way in which a failure to secure our perimeter 
might be used against us. And for what it's worth, this style of live streaming of intrusion isn't new. Around Christmas a year ago, the publication Vice reported on a podcast called Nulledcast, which live streamed to content sharing platform Discord, an incident where criminal actors hijacked a Nest and Ring smart home video and audio to harass the residents in creepy ways. And so I don't mean to creep everyone out, but this is what was shown. And I was thinking about, as I mentioned at the top of the show, Leo, how you had mentioned that Lisa didn't want cameras spread around yeah, the house. No. <laughs> Especially One that drone. <laughs> in- yeah, exactly. <laughs> One incident captured a man talking to young children through the device in their bedroom claiming to be Santa. Oh, I remember that. Vice, yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. Vice reported last year, and they said, quote, in a video obtained by WMC5, which was Action News in Memphis, Tennessee, courtesy of the family, you can see what the hacker would have seen. A viewpoint that looms over the entire room from where the camera is installed in a far corner, looking down on the children's beds and dressers while they play. The hacker is heard playing the song Tiptoe Through the Tulips, through the device's speakers. And when one of the daughters, who is eight years old, stops and asks who's there, the hacker says, it's Santa, it's your best friend, unquote. (laughs) So Vice also reported finding posts on hacker forums offering simple ring credential stuffing software, which is, we now know, that the credential stuffing, the term for brute forcing, as little as $6 for the software. And to their credit, Ring is responding. By February of 2020, Ring had rolled out an added layer of security beyond its already mandatory two-factor authentication, which is you know the familiar one-time six-digit code to log on. They also now have alerts when someone logs onto the account and tools to control access by third-party service providers, which could also be breached. And Ring is also preparing to roll out, it was, it was, but well, to roll out end-to-end video encryption, which was originally slated for the for release by the end of 2020. It'll probably happen soon. Ring's announcement last September 24th said, with end-to-end encryption, your videos will be encrypted on the Ring camera, and you will be the only one with the matching key stored on your mobile device that can decrypt and view your recordings. So you could argue that should have always been there, but this is the way we learn, and it is going to be there soon. So, you know, the takeaway is the more our digital technology becomes intertwined with our analog lives, the more inherent exposure our analog lives are going to be having to flaws in the digital domain. So I guess I just, you know, it becomes increasingly important to really take security seriously. Clearly, people who are not security conscious have a single password, probably for everything. And yes, they used it for their email and their email account got compromised by some website breach somewhere. And they also use it to, you know, to log into their Ring account. And so, not surprisingly, bad guys figured this out and and took advantage of it. Wow. 